Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. The goal of the weekend editions on this show is never about telling you what to do, but more about searching through all the feeds and news outlets to try to uncover clues about the economy, the direction of the market and interest rates, and of course, stocks, crypto, AMC and XRP. So sit back as I run through everything and enjoy unlimited access to Uncle Frank's bullshit detector free of charge, beginning with Yahoo Finance's morning brief. Soft landing hopes drove a stock market rally, but investors shouldn't be celebrating yet. As investors increasingly bet on a soft landing, economists are quick to point out the risks. And Goldman Sachs sees limited upside to stocks in 2024 as the market rallies. The bank sees the majority of the S&P 500 gains for 2024 coming late in the year when investors get clarity on the timing of rate cuts and U.S. elections conclude. <laughs> now, guys, the reason I read those headlines to you specifically is because that's Wall Street's narrative. That's what you'll hear on CNBC and Fox Business again and again until they change it. My subscribers know I'm rooting for surprise rallies to the upside right now to burn the hedgies who are short beyond their wildest nightmares and praying for a correction. They are facing redemptions, new regulations, new calls for transparency, and demands to curb their leverage. That's because if something goes seriously sideways, they're already sensing they will be the scapegoats. Trust me when I say they are in a far more precarious position than the AMC shareholders or XRP investors, and Uncle Frank is excited to see it get worse for them. Returning to the brief, I found this to be an interesting warning. Remember, we talked about it here months before it happened. Generative AI is going to create a tsunami of disinformation leading into the 2024 election. Remember I told you about that. Retail sales fall less than forecast in October as U.S. consumers defy expectations again. October's retail sales report comes as investors have recently cheered signs of slowing economic activity coinciding with falling inflation. Now, I'll admit Yahoo's morning brief is boring as hell, but this part is not the chart of the week. The real narrative of 2023, titled The Magnificent Seven, are dominating and boosting the S&P 500 in 2023. From the article, Retail Week is over, and we've learned that the consumers who have been so resilient for so long in the face of inflation have finally begun to watch their wallets. But our chart of the week shows it isn't falling inflation or a muted outlook from retailers, both of which are welcome news to Jay Powell and the Fed Reserve driving stocks higher. Rather, this year's rally has been and remains centered on big tech. Data tracks Nicholas Colas reflecting on big tech's big year this week pointed out the perfect storm of tax law selling in 2022, which provided a foundation for the generative AI hype train and cost cutting to build on this year, giving these stocks a monster year so far that's led many of them to approach their 2021 high water marks. The next logical question is, what about 2024? If rates come down, it's likely good news for the tech sector, which has traditionally used low rates as miracle grow. But Colas pointed out that interest rates are also the reason why the non-tech companies have struggled comparatively this year. Looking at the performance of the Magnificent Seven of Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, NVIDIA, and Tesla compared to the benchmark S&P 500 is stark. 
It's even more stark when you remember that the S&P's major components are those very same stocks. It's more top heavy than it's ever been, a fact Goldman Sachs noted this week. And even further still, when you de-weight the heavy hitters with the S&P 500 equal weight index, the lowest line on the chart, making the Magnificent Seven's Magnificent Year look even better. Before we go on, let's review last week's action by visiting the assholes at Seeking Alpha and the Wall Street Breakfast newsletter. The major stock market indexes eked out gains Friday, but scored gains for a third straight week as Treasury yields continued to fall. The advance has been sparked by surprisingly tame U.S. inflation data that gave hope to investors that the Fed Reserve's string of interest rate hikes was in the rearview mirror. The yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note tumbled 19 basis points for the week to 4.44%. In the stock market, the Dow Jones Index advanced 1.9%. The S&P 500 rose 2.2%, and the NASDAQ Composite climbed 2.4%. In the past three weeks, the Dow gained 78 the S&P surged 9.6, and NASDAQ jumped 11.7. The longer end 10-year Treasury yield ended the week at 4.4% and the shorter end 2-year yield closed at 4.9%. And here's a highlight from Bloomberg's weekend edition. U.S. markets have been sending a pretty clear message of late. More bets are signaling that the Fed Reserve is done hiking interest rates to rein in inflation and that's spurred a big November rally for stocks. Did you guys know November has been the strongest month for stocks since 1950? The benchmark index has declined for the month just once in the past 11 years. That was 2021. As for the Dow, the blue chip index has gained more than 1% on average in November over the last 100 years. Well, if you didn't know that, now you do. And I promise you, the Nimrods over at the Predatory Short Hedge Funds definitely know it. And they don't like holding trades where they have only a 1 in 11 odds chance of winning. Anyway, with new data indicating price surges are ebbing and the economy slowing just as the Fed intended, some of the more optimistic investors are even, even putting wagers on a rate cut for early next year. I don't see that just yet, but I'm glad to hear it. With team recession in retreat, it's not just Wall Street that's hopeful Fed Chair Jerome Powell has accomplished his soft landing. The head of the world's largest retailer has predicted consumer prices could soon drop. Quote, we may be managing through a period of, de of deflation in the months to come, Walmart CEO Doug McMillan said during the company's earnings call. So the chart, the chart on your screen is titled U.S. Inflation Slows in Broad Fashion. Fed anecdotes show business people remain focused on higher prices. Now the black line, that's change in consumer price index excluding food and energy month over month. The yellow bars, that's the change in CPI month over month. So this thing is definitely cooled down, looks like it's heading in the right direction. Uh, I could tell you one thing, the suspense is killing the hedge funds right now while we're all waiting for Beyonce to drop in an XRP catalyst. More on that momentarily. Bottom line, guys, is Uncle Frank can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but when it does happen, your ass won't be surprised. Now let's run through some crypto headlines from Crypto.com Snapshot. More than 1 billion U.S. of corporate inflows in 2023. Total crypto in funds for 2023 so far have exceeded 1 billion U.S. dollars, according to data from digital asset manager CoinShares. The 1.14 billion total makes 2023 the third highest yearly crypto inflow ever. HSBC launches tokenized securities. HSBC is set to introduce digital asset custody services for tokenized securities like bonds on the blockchain. The bank expects to go live with the service in 2024. UBS introduces three crypto ETFs. 
UBS's high net worth clients can now trade three crypto exchange traded funds through the bank's Hong Kong platform. The ETFs are Samsung Bitcoin Futures Active, CSOP Bitcoin Futures, and CSOP Ether Futures. Together, the three products boast assets worth around $72 million. JP Morgan's blockchain coin rolled out. JP Morgan has rolled out a programmable payment feature for institutional users of its private blockchain platform, JPM Coin, touting its offering as the first of its kind by a global commercial bank. The solution caters to blockchain-based accounts of the JPM Coin system, allowing users to program payments using an if this, then that interface. Deutsche Bourse accelerates blockchain securities. Deutsche Bourse, owner of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, says it will accelerate the development of its blockchain-backed D7 digital securities registry and build a trading platform for digital assets. Well, these headlines say it all. Crypto is back. Tokenized securities, crypto ETFs, and blockchain adoption is on the rise. I'm glad everyone watched XRP spike on the fake news that its ETF appeared at the DTCC because that sends a clear warning to the whales that may be algo trading and shorting it. You do not want to be short when an XRP ETF is officially announced. And here's a great article from Coinpedia. ETF or Ripple IPO, which will skyrocket XRP's price to 25. In a recent episode of Crypto Crossfire on Ben Armstrong's crypto channel, experts had a lively debate on what could drive XRP to an impressive $25 per coin. The hot topics were the upcoming XRP Exchange Traded Fund, or ETF, and the much-awaited initial public offering, or IPO, of Ripple, the company closely tied to XRP. Now, here's Uncle Frank's take on this. I don't know why the crypto geeks have to argue about which catalyst is better when both of these things are going to happen, in my opinion. I believe we are going to get an XRP ETF because it's in the top five of all cryptos by market cap. That's a fact. And Ripple is going to go public. The best part about this trade setup is XRP is still cheap. It's the best mousetrap in the world when it comes to cross-border payments. And hundreds of banks have already indicated they plan to use it. Now, Uncle Frank is not a pump-style YouTuber. I will tell you exactly what I think is going to happen without the hype. I have nothing to gain if you buy this crypto. I think when the next catalyst drops, if there's a run in XRP, it will take out all of its most recent highs over the past few years and then make a new high, probably around four or higher. That's my call for now, and I won't change it until how I see it trades once it gets there, if it does. And this is the article that has me most excited for XRP over the next couple weeks from FX Empire. Price analysis. Three bullish reasons to buy Ripple XRP this week. On-chain data analysis weighs in on three critical bullish indicators that could trigger an early rebound next week. Ripple XRP price dropped to $0.60 cents on Saturday, November 18th, down 20% from its local top of $0.72 cents recorded just two weeks ago. While retail investors show weak hands, crypto whales have invested $12 million this week, capitalizing on falling prices to buy the dip. Critical on-chain data shows that social media mentions of XRP have dwindled considerably this week, indicative of a local market bottom and eminent trend reversal, widespread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Let's dig a little deeper on reason one. Crypto whales are capitalizing on falling prices. XRP emerged as one of the biggest losers in the top 10 crypto rankings this week. But despite XRP's 20% price drop over the past 12 days, corporate investors continue to buy XRP. 
on-chain data from Santiment shows that there has been a noticeable increase in large transactions and whale holdings. As depicted in the chart, when XRP hit 72 on November 6th, the corporate investors, that's wallets holding 10 million to 1 billion XRP, held a total of 16.6 billion XRP in their cumulative balances. However, as of November 18th, the whales have rapidly increased their holdings to 16.8 billion XRP. This implies that they capitalized on falling prices to acquire 20 million XRP between November 6th and November 18th. Valued at the current market price of 60 cents, the recently acquired 20 million XRP are worth approximately 12 million. Such a large investment means that corporate investors remain confident in Ripple XRP ledger's fundamentals. This buying frenzy among the big players could spur retail investors to halt the sell-off long positions at any moment. Reason number two, months of large transactions has improved market liquidity. Can you see the arrow Uncle Frank put on the chart for my favorite monkeys? Another major reason that could aid XRP's quick price rebound is the rising spate of large transactions. According to the latest data pulled from Santiment, the XRP Ledger blockchain network recorded 113 large transactions on November 14th, the highest since July 31st. The large transactions metric tracks the number of transactions that exceed 1 million in nominal value on a given day. A steady increase in large transactions is regarded as a strong bullish indicator for two main reasons. Firstly, large transactions contribute to the liquidity and depth of the market, making it easier for participants to buy or sell significant amounts without causing substantial price slippage. Secondly, the increased liquidity is attractive to high volume traders and investors. In effect, this could attract even more prospective corporate investors to join the buying frenzy in the coming weeks. If this thesis holds, it could be a precursor to an XRP price rebound next week. Now stick with me, Simeons, because this is getting good. I don't want to follow retail on this trade. Speaking only for myself, I want to follow the whales. Reason number three, media hype surrounding XRP has cooled. Lastly, as XRP prices dip this week, Crypto traders switch focus to other top charting tokens like Doge and Shiba Inu. In effect, the media hype surrounding XRP has reduced significantly. In confirmation of this stance, Santiment's chart illustrates that since rejecting at 72 cents on November 6th, XRP's social dominance has dropped from 3.86% to 1.5% as of Saturday, November 18th today. This decline in social dominance can be crucial to XRP price action next week and for a number of reasons. Social dominance measures the percentage of mentions that a cryptocurrency attracts in reference to the top 50 most talked about blockchain projects. Firstly, a decline in social hype is often an indication that the market has reached a local bottom and strategic swing traders looking to buy at the bottom could consider this the perfect time to re-enter the XRP market. Secondly, when an asset is devoid of media hype, prospective new investors often see the current prices at a fair market value of the token. Hence, if investors consider the current decline in XRP media mentions as a signal to enter the market, XRP's price could make a bullish reversal next week and beyond. In summary, the millionaire whale spotted buying XRP aggressively, the consistent rise in large transactions, and cooling media hype are three major bullish reasons to buy XRP this week. However, the 58 cent area is a major reversal point, although it's unlikely within the current on-chain circumstance, but if the bears force a downswing below that, that territory, these three bullish indicators could be invalidated. 
And breaking news from the Cryptopolitan, Ripple's AMM launch promises a new era for XRP ledger utility. Ripple's upcoming automated market maker, AMM, on the XRP ledger stands as a beacon of innovation, poised to enhance the utility and demand for XRP. Jasmine Cooper, Ripple's lead product manager, recently shed light on this development in a conversation with Erie, a prominent XRP community influencer. Cooper's insights come at a time when the XRP community is abuzz with the potential of the AMM to transform XRP's tokenomics. However, Cooper clarified that the fundamental principles of XRP's tokenomics remain unchanged. The AMM's introduction, contrary to some speculations, does not signal a shift towards making XRP akin to a stable coin. Rather, it strengthens its role as a utility token, crucial for account reserves and gas payments. Echoing Cooper's sentiments, cryptocurrency expert Panos Makaris reiterated that the AMM would alter XRP's essence, but would leverage volatility to boost its value as an asset. As a reminder, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Please don't make any investment decisions based on this video or any other video for that matter. I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any stock or cryptocurrency. I'm merely sharing my own trading activity and the, and the strategy behind it. Last week, I was nibbling on AMC on the drop, and I also picked up $7 and $8 calls expiring December 1st in anticipation of a rise in the stock as we approach the excitement of the Beyonce drop on December 1st and the dual drop of Napoleon and Disney's Wish on November 26th. Second, I'm also anticipating a big turnout for Thanksgiving, but now I'm turning my focus and remaining resources to XRP, where it looks to be ending its downturn. Today from Screen Rant, the Marvels tracking for catastrophic second weekend box office drop. All right, hopefully this is the end of the woke Bud Light style strategy from Hollywood. No one likes it, so knock it off. People go to the movies to be entertained, to escape, not to be lectured on social engineering. Enough's enough. I'm going to close with this post from Tarzan on Twitter. Dear Apes, here is a chart. AMC with total revenues from the year 2015 to 2023. Every recovery starts with rising top line revenue. The writer's strike is over. The actor's strike is over. We have a modified business model that includes distribution, not just exhibition. Retail popcorn is moving into two new food chains. So let's hope we can get a surprise concert release to build on Taylor Swift and Beyonce before December 1st. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.